from the back line and one from um, further back a little bit in order to prep. This is probably one of the most often used shots and least practiced. All right, so they have to be here and protecting because otherwise, you know, the ball's going to go in the net here, which means the whole of the net is exposed essentially. So from here, that's why you need to get yourself out and away from the keeper because they get to use everything. Their whole body can stop you. So from here, laying out flat, they can actually take up a whole lot of space, throw a stick in there as well. They've got a whole lot covered. So you need to be careful because you can't leave the post because that's where the goal is. So there's a distance away that you need to be in order to negate the goalkeeper and open up all of that. So it might be here because the closer I am here, so just as we spoke about before and how much goal you have open to you is a better thing. So I might be here because I've opened up everything. Plus it gets me a little bit out of um, Caitlin's vision here. She can't actually see me, she's focused on the ball and I get to do whatever I want over here because she can't see me. Sometimes if you get into this spot here, you've got to defend it with you and you do have to jump into this space at the last second and have this shot here, but you've still got this amount of goal to open and have a go at. So from here, the one-time shot is all about the wrists and your stick face. Because from here, I need to get the ball over there. So even if it ends up here, you need to get out and around in order to get it into that corner. So one-time shot. What does that mean for the person on the ball? So I want to get this into that corner as soon as I can. Because from here, so Kathy, you want to pass me the ball. If I trap, she's moved. So I've got less. She's still moving and she's coming around. Because the smart keepers won't do the whole big arc anymore, which is really disappointing. They get across and cover the net. All right, so they don't follow this ball out here and still give you all of that. They're counting across here. It's annoying for the strikers. But I still have this to aim at if I can get it there quicker. So the idea is that I don't trap it and that I hit it straight away. So as Caitlin's working out what's going on, she's moving too late. I've already shot. She's turning to try and stop the shot after I've trapped it. No trap, already gone. So what's important for the person on the back line? There might be some against the post on that. Accuracy, what else? Power. Power, good, because if Kat smashes the ball at me here, I can't, I can't do anything about it. My preference also would be that it's on the ground, because that's easier. So when the ball's on the ground, I've got all of my stick to use. So if Kat, if you want to pass me the ball on the ground, I have all of this stick face available to me. The power comes from my wrist and my forearms, no time to do a big wind up, but I am fully across this ball. It will not go through me unless she passes it too hard to me. I don't have time even to do that. All right? So the pass from the back line is critical. The sharpness of this movement to tell this person exactly where I want the ball is critical as well. The easiest time or the easiest, so the accuracy is straight at you so that you can actually step into her here. You know what? So every time I should be able to knock it in that corner. Now if the ball comes a little bit back here, I can still step out and around and get the ball back there. If it goes in front, then I have to change. And I might change to this, or if it's done with some pace, just to knock it and deflect it in. But the idea is to one time knock this ball when it's coming straight at you. Same from here. So the angle changes a little bit from here, because when it's coming at you, I can just, there's a good angle into the corner there. From here, if I stand like this, I've already closed off the second post to myself. So for starters, I've got to do this. So just as you were trying to set up the ball before into the opposite corner, sometimes you have to set up yourself into the opposite corner in order to open it up. Because if I'm closed like this, all I'm going to do is hit my own foot. Because that's where I'm trying to get the ball. So if I'm getting it here, my foot, my own foot is in the way of me scoring this goal. So you have to be opened up and able to then knock this ball in the corner. The other thing you need to think about is well, the goalkeeper, where you put this ball is the corner, but also then sometimes when you take this ball. So if this ball has taken a little while to get to me, so it's a really slow lumbering pass, Caitlin not only has the time to get the right line, but she gets the opportunity to close me down. 
So, when we were talking before about the circle and the angles, so, again, if I'm on the back line from here, I've got a slither of gold to shoot at. Here, a little bit more, a little bit more, all the way through to the middle where then it starts to close up again. Whole net. It's the same for the keepers and when they're closing you down. So, if I stand here, as massive as I am, I still can't cover everything here, even the biggest goalie can't cover everything from that ball coming from there. But the closer I am, the bigger I get. So I get to smother this ball. So from there, I can save everything here no matter my size, because I'm on top of it, I get the whole body to stop this ball as a keeper. So if this ball is delayed, and the keeper gets to one correct line, two close down, these steps are done so quickly. By the time this ball gets to you, a little bit of bobble, she's literally on top of you, closing this down, dead in the water. So you, what do you do? Change the line, absolutely. So then the hardest thing for the keeper then is a change, is a shift. Because she's come out here and come out quickly, the moving sideways is difficult, so you have to change. If you trap and drag, takes up time. So the more things that you have to do, the more chances that it's going to be messed up because you're under pressure from the goalie. Again, they are whole body trying to stop you. So they can dive either way. They cover a lot of area. So how do you change the line on the keeper if you can't drag, if you want to get it done quicker than that because there are defenders coming as well? Well, what do you think Caitlin's um, lining up off? So Kath is about past me. What's really slow? Where is she lined up to? To me. But what I have available to me? I have a stick and I also have a leg. So that means that when the ball is coming slowly and Caitlin changes her line and starts to move down, I've already changed the line by taking this pass quicker. So she's lined up to me, but all of a sudden I'm shooting from this space. So this is not a really slow pass. <laughs> <laughs> then she's got it wrong. So she will line up on me, and all of a sudden it's not correct. So she's stepping out into this space here, and I've got this part of the goal to aim at. So it might be that that's not actually the case, that you are closed down by the people because you're caught too close. Then you can quickly change the line. There has to be one quick change. I, I think, in my opinion, is that's why the goal kickers often get the reverse stick wrong. So, Kath, if you want to pass me the ball. So here, and then I bobbled or mess it up. Kaylin comes with me. She's still lined off me. One quick change, and I've opened up the other side of the net. So I think the keepers sometimes get the reverse stick wrong because they line up from the person. So if I'm hitting on the four stick, I'm hitting from under my body, everything is lined up here. On the reverse, you're actually hitting from outside the line of your body, well outside. So if the keeper is lined up off my body, from the ball, they have the wrong line. So when you can change the ball one time and quickly on the defender, especially on the reverse, once you shift, then you open up the other side of the net. So although we've spoken about second post, shooting professional side, professional side, second post, Sometimes when you've opened up a passing channel into the goal, you go the first post. So does that make sense? So if you've opened up that space, you go first post. Getting across the line and there isn't any space on the first post, plus you've usually got a teammate to help you out, second post. So let's do that same movement, just not as far. So Izzy, you're here. So you're starting in here, Sarah, why don't you start here? So we'll do that same crossover movement. So if you recognise you've got too close to the keeper, you might take a step out and away. Sarah's going to come in here and be down the whole time. So there's going to be a miss hit, a miss trap, a deflection off a defender, a little touch by the keeper. That will fall here every time. You have to expect it come every time. <laughs> So 
All right, so you need to have your wrists together in order to slap this into the corner. You don't base it. One time slap it into the corner. So sympathetic passes, you guys, so they can one time it. Straight to them. Good. Down, is he down, tummy? Yeah. So you've got to go your reverse. The ball is coming to the post. So first in the middle is shooting. First in the post has to be thinking the ball is coming. So let's swap. Finish each one, stay down on the post. Be careful about just trying to use your hook. You're trying to use the whole face. So then it doesn't matter what comes at you, if it's on the ground, you will get a connection. one-time shoot is all about the quality of pass. Giving yourself the full bat to have a swipe at this is good and the use of your wrists in order to open up the other side of the net. So the other thing we need to talk about is the stick face. So a couple of people at times had it too open and it went over the top. From this situation when you've got a whole goal to aim at then you need to keep your stick face fully straight up because you've got plenty of gold aim at, you're not trying to get it over anything, you're just trying to make sure it goes in the corner. So keep your stick face straight up. It changes if you need to get a little bit of height, like if you're out a little bit further and the keeper's sliding out at you, you might need to actually get it open, that's fine. But when you've got all gold to aim at, then you need to keep it straight up. One time shot from here. This is gonna come off the crazy catch and then you have to hit it in the net. So you have to hit it hard. You can put it anyway in the net that you want, but you don't have much time. So the point of having a one-time goal shot is because you don't have time to stop and set it up. So on these, you don't have time to wait for the ball to bounce twice or three times before you decide that that's a good time to hit it in the net. Because the defender or the goalkeeper will have already run through and grabbed the ball. So one tip. So if I'm, we're talking about the one time goal shot and the ball's coming along the ground, it's coming at you, so you can one time knock it. And you get all of your stick to have a go at it when it's coming in this direction and you're nice and low. So it doesn't matter between here and here almost where you make the connection, you will get a connection. When the ball's bouncing, that obviously changes. So you can do the baseball wind up but you've still only got then the ball going up and down one chance to hit the ball as you swing through here. So for us, and because you can't actually hit it over the top either, you have to have a, an element of, well there's a limit in height with which you can hit it. So if you're doing baseball, then all of a sudden you lean back, open shoulders and the ball goes for mass. So the idea is to make sure that you stay down on the ball. So the best way to do that is to have your bat upright and get your shoulders over the ball and swing through that way. So that means when the ball's bouncing, then no matter where it is on that plane, I've still got this full stick face to connect with it. Plus it'll help keep the ball down. So it's a bit more of a cricket shot rather than a baseball shot. Does that make sense? So we might try and see where this ball lands. Murph, why don't you start? Just do a couple of experiments with the ball. <laughs> Now I'd be watching out. 
First time shots. Okay. spoke about the one time shot and being able to put it in the corner and making sure that you've got your body open to open up that side of the net. We're going to do that but with a head shot so at the top of the circle, receiving here and open and then moving in this direction, keeping the ball in that perfect line to enable you to hit it into the corner. So there's a couple of things here that you have to remember to do. Number one, you have to stay down the whole time. So once you receive the ball here, there isn't a play into space and coming up and then a shot. It's a receiving the space here, staying down and a shot. Small, quick footsteps, not a play into space and then a big step here. Lots of little foot movements in order to get your placement right. So your body compared to the ball, not the other way around. All right, so you've got to get it out in front of you. And we're still going through the second post. So from here, it'll be a really light pass. Okay, so it doesn't have to be done fast here. Keep the ball out in front so it ends up in a good spot to hit this ball. A couple of things that are happening. And they're the opposite to each other. So for a couple of you, first of all, there's a bit of a, a trap here that once you've got an open base and sometimes when you get the opportunity to think about this and the ball's coming and you have a look where the goal is, it forces you into doing this. Once you have a look and you see what you need to do next, so midfielders, this is a really good point. You guys, when you're watching the play on one side, if you're checking the other side of the field, it will force you to open up and to recognise that you need to get the ball over to that side of the field. If you're just watching the play here, then you exclude the other side. Having a look, getting your head up will open it up. So it's the same for here with the goal shot. If you get your head up and you, you see the goal and then you get the pass, automatically you open yourself up to enable that goal shot to happen. What then happens is when the ball comes and we need to trap it, we go this way. So you change from being open, especially when the ball's bobbly and it's not perfect pass, then all of a sudden we go here rather than moving accordingly and keeping this open stance. So for some of you then, once you've kept this open stance, there's also a bit of trapping in here too close to your body. And as soon as you bring your left hand in here, the ball hits the stick and comes into here. It doesn't stay out here where I want to have a goal shot. So you've got to check that you're out here with your stance. So your whole body is aligned this way, not just your feet and then your stick's doing this. So get this out here as well so that the ball falls exactly where you want it to go. For others, there's a stance here and then a pushing of the ball into this path. So is he doing to the ball? So rather than here and bringing the ball along here and start putting up into the corner, you do this and chuck the ball out there. So we don't want that either. So the two extremes, one lot's going into the foot and the other lot pushing it out this way. So take it with you as you go. You don't have to move here, just get the ball, keep your left hand out try and get that line first. So let's do one round where there is no shot. So easy passing the ball. So I'm gonna do that, see where it lands. All right? Here wanting the goal shot, we'll move into this now. So come